by you and your doctor. The content, information, and opinions expressed during the related show are those of the show personalities and guest alone, and not those of Vic Canellis Media Group, its parent, affiliates, or stations. VCMG Live is not responsible for any content, information, or opinions expressed. User bears full responsibility for their reliance on such content, information, or opinions. Amp2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954 717 7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Welcome back to another episode of You and Your Doctor, sponsored by All County Healthcare. We're a certified home health care agency servicing Palm Beach County, Broward, Miami Dade, and we can be reached at 954 717 7027. I am your host, Louise Gomez. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we have with us Dr. Ahmed Riaz, and he has the Riaz Clinic right here in Fort Lauderdale. The address is 3342 Northeast 34th Street, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33308. And the phone number is 954-358-2363. And he can be reached at the riazclinic.com. Instagram is at the Riaz Clinic and the Riaz Clinic at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Riaz. Thank How you are you today? Nice. I'm doing really well. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule because I, I know, um, you know, doctors have a lot of, you know, crazy hours and schedules. So I want to let you know in advance that we appreciate you taking your time to, to do this. And so, Dr. Riaz, can you um, share with our listeners a little bit more about your background and a little bit more about your experience, education, and training? Where did you go to school and whatnot? Sure. Uh, so I am what you call a sports medicine doc and family medicine doc. Uh, so a little bit about my background. I used to be a high school athlete. Uh, used to play football at 140 pounds. So you can imagine I got injured a lot. Was in the oh. training room. Yeah. Oh, yes. So I found my love for orthopedic complaints, shoulder injuries, knee injuries, ankle injuries. Uh, so that, I think, was my true initial calling to start loving sports medicine. So I went to FIU uh, for undergraduate, then I went to medical school up in Georgia, and nice. then found my way back here to Miami at West Kendall Baptist Hospital, where I did my residency in family medicine for three years. And then uh, this past year, I just graduated in uh, sports medicine at Nova Southeastern University. Wow, congratulations. You know, I love hearing stories like this because you're passionate, you know, you did your football, you did that, you know, and so firsthand, you, it sounds like you experienced, you played football, so you experienced firsthand injuries, and so did you break anything, or was it, was it can you share, I'm just curious, what, it, what happened to you? Uh, so I, we were doing some tackling drills right before a, a game, and I almost dislocated my shoulder uh, while tackling somebody. So I wasn't able to move my arm. I was super scared. I'm like, how am I going to ever write again? How am I going to use oh. it again? But I was super, super grateful for the orthopedic staff, the physical therapy staff that helped me get back to doing simple things, such as putting on a shirt or combing my hair. Uh, so I really, really can empathize with anyone going through injury, and uh, I can be in their shoes. I know the long struggle process it takes to get back to where you need to get to. That's a, that's a huge component because you're actually serving people that you have those, you've had experience in that. So the level of empathy <laughs> and compassion, it's, it's remarkable because I'll, I'll tell you personally, um, probably eight weeks ago, I fell down my stairs and I sprained my ankle. And so I, you know, until that happens to you, you know, you don't really realize, like you said, just a simple thing, like putting on your shirt or for me, 
I couldn't put a shoe on for, you know, a couple of weeks. But so the simple things like that, um, and you actually experience that. So I, I would imagine your, your patients are happy to have you as a doctor because I know that's what I look for is that type of compassion. Right, of course, and I will. I love to treat everyone as like my family. Sometimes I feel like, especially with the elderly population, is whenever they see a doctor, they get written a prescription, they're out the door, right. but no one really explains to them what, what's going on, what's uh, what's an injury, what's a sprain. Explain to me the anatomy. So I try to take my time and try to go through step by step process, answer other questions. I do take a lot longer than your typical doctor, but I want to make sure that all your answers are, all your questions are answered before you go out the door. And I think patients appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. That's, as you know, that was, that's our number one complaint. You know, as a patient, we always feel like, oh my God, I'm rushed and the doctor doesn't listen to me and they have no time. So just for you taking that extra step and, you know, engaging in that deep conversation, I feel like that kind of puts the barrier down and then people are more open to, you know, want to converse and want to reveal more information. And Dr. Rios, can you share with us, what is the age range of patients that you treat, um, if you can sure. share? Thank you. Uh, so as a family medicine doc, we treat from the cradle to the grave, we, we like to say, wow. from newborn okay. baby to the elderly. Uh, I've kind of tailored my practice with sports a little bit more to like the teenager to the adult. So my oldest patient is 97 years old uh, and try to treat them and they're as active as a 16 year old. So I get a wide range of uh, patients to treat. Nice. So you, you get the whole gamut of, of patients. That's really good. And um, what type of insurances do you accept at the practice? Do you take major insurances? What what might they be? Yes. So I opened up about eight months in practice. So still fairly new, still in the process of applying for other insurances. So I do take Medicare. I do take Medicaid. Recently got approved for Cigna. And I also nice. take Ambitor insurance. Uh, so I'm hoping in the near future start uh, seeing a lot more patients. But uh, I do also want to tell your listeners, uh, growing up from humble beginnings, uh, if you don't have insurance, I do not want that to deter you from coming to see us. Please give us a call. And we'll see what we can do to try to help you out. Uh, I remember growing up, uh, our, our family, we didn't have the most of money. And finding uh, a good doctor, good insurance was always a struggle. So I really want to be able to help someone that, uh, if you're not able to uh, find the doctor and just don't feel... Uh, uh, scared to seek out uh, attention because of cost. So we'll see what we can do to try to help you out. Uh, you know, we appreciate that because that could be a determining factor for certain people who maybe are, you know, they say, oh, well, I don't have insurance and I don't know. So, you know, we're happy to know that, you know, you're, you're willing to, to, to see all patients. That really is definitely something that people want to know. So thanks for that. So what are your true areas of interest? What is it that you're like, wow, I, I'm getting a patient that's coming in with, what is it, X, Y, Z? Is is Or is there even a special area of interest, the particular type of sure. um, interest? Uh -huh. Yeah, so one of my favorite things to see, uh, probably not as much for the patients, but it's to deal with arthritis, especially knee arthritis. Uh, we see it much more and more common uh, in our working population. I've seen it as young as even 40s or 45s. We live such an active lifestyle. Some are construction workers, some are house workers that they're cleaning all the time. They put a lot of wear and tear in their knees. And a lot of times people think that surgery is the only option, uh, but that's actually not the case. We do have a lot more non-surgical options that we like to advocate for our patients. For example, uh, just simple stretching and physical therapy is really, really big component of helping with a lot of knee arthritis. A lot of times, you know, stretch properly, uh, we don't exercise and are flexible, and that can contribute to a lot of the pain that a lot of our patients get. I would say about 40 or 50% can actually just get better with simple physical therapy. Other things I like to offer in our clinic, we do injections as well. Uh, let's say therapy doesn't work for you, oral medications don't work for you. We can do cortisone injections or gel injections. Uh, interesting things that to know about cortisone. I'm sure many of your listeners have heard about it. Uh, it can be kind of like a fire extinguisher. You're aching in pain. You want to go on a trip. You want to go on vacation. You need, need some pain relief. We can do a quick cortisone injection to kind of calm it down. It's not going to cure your arthritis, but sure. kind of get you through your trip and, and get you going. So I like to say it's a spectrum uh, from 
zero to three months, meaning that you can get, if lucky, you get three months relief, uh, and if you're unlucky, you may get a day relief. So there's no clear guided science that you're gonna for sure, for sure get better, but it can help. Uh, a second option is we also do some gel injections like uh, hyaluronic acid. Uh, or the rooster shot, as some people may know. Oh, I didn't know uh, that's so, what they call it, the rooster shot. Okay, good to know. Uh, and I, that's I believe only, right. for, only for the knee? Is that only for the knees? Yes, for oh. now, from what we've seen in the studies, it's for the knees. So I like to say it's the WD-40 of the knees. You can lubricate it, keep it going a little bit more. The lifespan of the treatment is a little bit longer, from three to six months. So a lot more patients like that because there are not as many injections. And the newer, newer treatments, which we're not offering yet, but from my studies and my training, is called PRP. Uh, it's called platelet-rich plasma therapy or stem cell therapy, mm -hmm. uh, which has been a lot more, uh, getting a lot more attention. Uh, so a little bit background of that, what that is, is uh, they take out blood just like you do for a regular blood draw. They okay. spin it and they spread yep. the layers of uh, healing properties. So you have a lot of white blood cells in that component, and they can inject that back into your knee. It's uh, pretty much your own body, so no real big side effects, and it can last up to a year of uh, relief. So these are all newer treatments that we have. Yes, I've heard of PRP. Um, so a quick question. If somebody uses PRP, you said they can do injections in the knee. Would that help them with arthritis as well as if they have, I don't know, torn ligaments yeah. or... For sure. So it can help. Uh, so it has a lot of healing properties and factors. So, uh, for example, if you cut your arm, you start bleeding, you yeah. have that scab that forms right away because your blood has a lot of healing properties. So we use the same healing properties of platelets and inflammatory properties to help your knee. There's a key caveat, though. A lot of people think you're going to get brand new tissue, a brand new cartilage. That doesn't happen. But it can definitely calm down the inflammation and the pain. And there's very minimal side effects because it's your own blood that you're putting back into your system. Interesting. And so, um, on average, is that something somebody has to do in cycles or in, a, like, I don't know, a sessions? Maybe they need five, or just depending on how bad it is, or, or they do se sequential treatments? Yeah. So, generally, it's indicated for patients with mild to moderate arthritis. If you have severe arthritis, bone on bone, you're probably not going to get much relief from it, to be honest. But if you have mild to moderate, you usually can do well with one or two injections, and that should last you about a year. And if it works, you should give it another try. If not, um, then it may not be for you. So it's really 50-50 trial. Sure. Uh, for, we do know for like la uh, lateral condylitis, like a tennis elbow, it works really, yeah. really great. But for other things, it doesn't work as great. So it just depends on the severity of it. Um, the one key, so, I guess, negative of it is that a lot of insurances don't cover it. So it can be a little bit costly because it's out mm. of pocket cost. Sure. But if you can afford it, that's a viable option. We do know with the side effects of steroids, when you get too many steroids, it can cause a lot of toxic, uh, toxicity to the joints. So you can cause faster degeneration. It can speed up your arthritis. So we don't recommend more, getting more than two or three a year. So you should try to space those out as much as possible. Wow. So we're going to take a commercial break, Dr. Riaz, and uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about other treatments, and we'll discuss a little bit more about other things that you're doing at the clinic. Thank you so much. All County Healthcare has exciting news for any and all patients with COPD or other respiratory ailments. Listen to what renowned pulmonologist Dr. Keith Robinson has to say. Hello, I'm Dr. Keith Robinson, board certified pulmonologist, medical director at Fusion Health Pulmonary Rehabilitation, and a board member with the American Lung Association of South Florida. We have exciting news for patients with COPD. We now offer IPV therapy at home, which has been demonstrated to improve airway clearance, decrease hospitalization, and improve quality of life of patients with COPD. Please call All County Healthcare for more information about this FDA approved therapy. For further information, call All County Healthcare now at 954 717 7027. That is 954-717-7027 or visit our website at allcountyhealthcare.com. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Remember, All County Healthcare 
always puts the patient's needs first. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. Welcome back to another episode of You and Your Doctor. We have Dr. Ahmed Riaz at the Riaz Clinic right here in Fort Lauderdale. It is 3342 Northeast 34th Street, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33308. He can be reached at 954-358-2363, the riazclinic.com, and Instagram handle is at the Riaz Clinic. Thanks for coming back, Dr. Riaz. So um, can you share um, a little bit more about your story and, you know, the name of your clinic and how all that got started? I think maybe... You, you have a little something you dedicated to, to somebody, if you can share that. Sure. Uh, so the Riaz Clinic, my last name is Riaz. Uh, we I'm very family-oriented. Uh, born and raised in Miami. We have 100 cousins, aunts, uncles. We all live close to each other. So wow. We all... That's a yes. huge family. <laughs> that is... Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing yeah. that photo with yeah. us. So definitely family is something very important to me. So my grandfather back home in Pakistan was a physician. He used yes. to take care of a lot of the community members. Uh, he used to provide a lot of charity care, try to help uh, others. They used to come from all walks of life to try to come to him for care. Uh, and I wanted to build a clinic under his name of, of his legacy. His last name was Riaz. I'm sorry, his first name was Riaz. And uh, I think it's a, a good dedication for him because I want to be the same source of, of care from my community. Uh, born here from South Florida, I want to help everyone in our community and try to get them the good care that they deserve and require. I love that story. He certainly made an amazing impression on you. And now you have this legacy with the name of your clinic. And not only that, with the work that you do, you know, with patients, you're, you're continuing his legacy. That's a beautiful story. So, wow. You have Thank a big you. family. <laughs> you have a Nice big family. Do they work with you? And in, in a lot of the family members help out in the in the clinic, or no, not yet. So my dad is actually uh, he owns an ice cream store of Carville. My mom's a housewife, so my okay. cousins uh, in our generation we start becoming doctors. So they all have different specialties. So maybe in the future we may open up a medical center. We'll see. Oh, good. I, I like those goals. Those are really good goals to have. Having a medical center. Why not? So. Um... Yeah, I wanted to get back to, I think it's so interesting, all of these treatments that you have, you know, because as we age, you know, like you said, the, the knee or, I don't know, something, the tennis elbow, all, all these different things that, you know, happen to us, um, you know, I like that you have different options. You're not just prescribing, like, here's a... Here's a pill and it'll take care of your, you know, your pain. No, you seem like you're very specific as far as, you know, treating the patients with different options. And um, I like that. I yeah. really do. And, and people and like I that. I believe, like, yeah, not everyone's created the same, right? Everyone has different problems. They need different types of approaches and treatment. Uh, I also like to offer uh, two different things. Uh, we, I also have an ultrasound at my clinic so we can do further diagnostics so let's say for example you have knee pain uh, we can have an ultrasound and do it at bedside uh, it's quicker than an MRI right we have it right there we have the results do you have some fluid in your knee do you have something torn can we address something get you kind of quicker treatment to kind of guide it uh, second mm. thing I also like to treat as well we also offer in our clinic uh, for patient back pain for example a lot of patients come with back pain they're told either take narcotics get injections right. on their back but not everyone is very fond of that so as a DO, what a DO is, we have extra training. We use our hands to help treat our patients. So we can do kind of like a massage, but we kind of correct abnormalities in the spine. We do different stretches to help uh, provide mobility and some pain relief. And some patients like that because they, it's not just a prescription, right? That's going to be temporary. Right. Uh, but it can provide some relief uh, on site. 
Yeah, it's literally hands on, which is, you know, people want that. Um, they, and, and I also like the fact that you're doing the ultrasound right there. So they're able to, you know, they're able to know right then and there. And then you're able to decipher what is one of the best treatments, treatment options for them. So right. that and you can see, you can also see the anatomy as well, right? If uh, a tendon's messed up, you can be like, hey, this is a tendon that's irritating you. We see inflammation, we see it's thickened. And here, let's try to uh, make a treatment plan just for you to target that. And I think a lot of patients can visually see what's wrong with them, and that helps as well. Oh, definitely, definitely. So we have a couple minutes left before the, the show is over, but um, Dr. Riaz, I wanted to, you know, maybe if you can share with us some some ex good experiences some of you maybe one of your patients or anybody that you know stands out to you that had a good experience and then maybe some tips and tricks you can leave us with um as a as a uh, you know an active person yes uh so i guess i can start maybe with the tips and tricks i would highly highly recommend everyone please please get out and exercise even if it's 15 minutes a day even if it's 10 minutes a day go for a nice walk yeah. Um, go do yoga, go do whatever you want to kind of get some mental relief. I feel like with COVID, everyone's been stuck inside. Anxiety has been high. Stress has been high. Yes. Uh, so please just get some fresh air. Uh, the Academy of Family Physicians, actually, they recommend of getting at least 30 minutes of exercise five days a week with about mm -hmm. moderate to mild intensity, meaning you break a little sweat, not so much that you're bent over and not can exercise the next day, but at least try to get outside and it's going to help with a, a lot of ailments that we have. I see a lot of patients with diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol. Yes. You're on so many medications. If you can work on dropping a little bit of weight, exercising a little bit more, you can hopefully come off a lot of medication. So as a primary care doctor, I would highly, highly recommend to do that. And I know sometimes we're busy. We say we don't have time in the day, but if we don't have 15 minutes in the day, do we really have a life? So we have to try to make effort, right? To uh, take care of our health. Yes, <laughs> super, super important. Mm -hmm. uh, patient experience. Um, I will say uh, I really like enjoying spending time with the older patients, my 97-year-old patients. Uh, they're very sweet, very old, but they're very active. So I try to uh, help them from not being too, too active where they want to uh, do everything. Uh, so just doing simple encouragements of, uh, you know, your mind may be a little bit faster than your body, so take it easy. Don't climb up the ladder to change the light bulb. Uh, do simple things to hopefully help prevent injuries and falls. It's very, very important. And that's why I'm a big, big proponent of doing physical therapy as well. Uh, to get, help get you mobility, stretching, uh, prevent further falls and injuries. Because we know if you break a hip, it's just downhill from there. You're going to have other complications. So we're trying to trying to really encourage our elderly to be a little bit more proactive and not too active, in a sense. I like that. Be proactive, but not too active. Okay. That's good. And um, thank you so much, Dr. Arias, for, for sharing with us all of your, um, all the information about your clinic and everybody gets to see you who has any type of physical therapy challenge or sports challenge. And again, I'm going to repeat, the phone number is 954-358-2363. The website is thereazclinic.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to your success in, with your clinic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lois. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Take care.